Okay, so we have already established that the rhythm section is where we will begin our mixing. So let's take a look at those now. I'm just going to drag the grouped rhythm section up to the top, and then I will solo the group. Let's make a loop from measure 40 to around 61. and we will have a quick listen. You will notice that beat 2 is peaking, and chorus beat is very nearly on the verge of doing the same, so we will attend to that. But instead of using the faders on the console, I'm going to drag up the console so we can see a bit more, and use the gain knob to gently decrease the volume until beat 2 comes out of the red. This tactic is great when you're first starting out a mix because it ensures that there is not too much gain going through the channel and giving us some breathing space when we come to add VSTs and plugins later on. I will do the same on chorus beat, reducing the gain to around minus 2 dB. You will also notice that our master bus is peaking, so we'll use the same method and reduce the gain on this too, around minus 3 or so should do. Okay, so let's jump straight into it and think about how we can make these drums sound bigger. There are many ways we can achieve this, and one of them is parallel compression. First, let's find out which one of the three is the leading the rest. By this, I mean which one do we want to be more prominent. So let's solo them one by one and find out. In my opinion, beat 1 and chorus beat are the main contenders, and beat 2 is just adding some additional ambience to the groove. However, beat 1 has the hardest kick drum, and if highlighted, will help to lead the track and give it that driving force that we're looking for. So let's add some parallel compression to beat 1. We are first going to add an additional bus, and we will name the bus Bus Beat 1 Par Comp. We then need to add a compressor to our new bus. For this, I will use the PC4KS type bus compressor and mess around with some of the settings. We need this kick drum to be very prominent, so I will raise the threshold to around minus 17. Give it a slowish attack at around the one second mark. This will help keep that nice high end hit. An attack that is too quick will make the compressor kick in too early and will cut off some of the crack that we need to make this drum sound prominent. A fast release will keep the compression compact and tight. We now need to attach beat 1 with our newly created par comp bus. So for this we need to add a send on beat 1. Right click on beat 1. Insert send. Beat 1 Par Comp. This is going to send the same signal into our bus, and because we have a compressor on this bus, we will get the best of both worlds, a clean and compressed sound working together, and it's this that will give us our big sound. Let's mute the bus now and hear a before and after.
Now that we have made the drum stand out a bit more, I want to add some character, and I think some delay will give me this. Now I want the delay to be just right, and have a certain time signature, so we're going to use the PX64 percussion strip. This plugin has very good unique settings that are perfect for drums and other percussion instruments, and can allow us to add such things as compression, but what we want are the delay settings, so we will switch it on and set the time to dotted quarter notes. We also want to turn the sync button to on if it's not already. This will ensure that whatever changes we make to the settings will automatically fit within our project tempo. Let's take a quick listen to these changes. Now if we solo all three drums together, we will hear that they're all taking up similar areas in the mix, so let's add some stereo widening to beat 2. For this, we will use channel tools. And we will use the increased width preset. A lot of people don't use presets to their full potential, or think it's cheating in some way. But if the setting works, it works. The best way to use a preset is as a starting point and then adjust the setting to your needs. But as it happens, this particular setting is fine the way it is. I'm also going to add some reverb onto this beat to blend it in with beat 1. For this, we will use the new Breverb that comes with X2. And we will use another preset called Snare Hall. And reduce the wet to around minus 8. We now come to our chorus beat. This beat has a particular feature that I want to enhance, and it's the snare hit. This is aiding our downbeat, so we need to think of a way of having this feature cut through the other beats. The one way to do this is through EQing, but we need to know whereabouts the snare hit sits in the frequency spectrum. So we are going to use the analyst to find out the information we need. OK, so let's hit play and see what shows up. OK, we are looking at the numbers at the bottom which show us our frequency span. And straight away, I can see that when the snare hits, there is an increase in the 5.1k region. So this now gives us a good indication of where to boost in order to enhance the current snare sound. We will now make the appropriate changes inside our Pro Channel. I'm going to be on the G type here. We will make a high pass roll off at around 40 Hz just to get rid of any low rumble that may be there. And we will increase the top end slightly at a frequency of around 4K. Narrow the Q to around 5 and boost around 6 dB. Now because of its high transient on the snare, we may have a bit of peaking. We are going to stop this not by reducing the gain or levels, but by adding a limiter. We are going to use the concrete limiter to give these drums some impact whilst limiting its output. A good effect is to set your ceiling level so the track no longer peaks. And then push the threshold as far as you can without peaking the track again. This gives an over the top compression sound which really works with these types of drums. The echo and reverb that was built into this clip is enhanced and dragged out. Let's have a listen to this effect. We will now spend a moment applying gain correction to all buses and tracks and finding a good volume level. I will play the track and make some adjustments to the gain knobs.
Let's proceed now onto mixing the synth. <laughs> 